Good morning. Welcome to Up to the Minute. Hey, it's a Wednesday. We're cruising through this last week before we go on winter break. And it's for us at HCC, it is the last week of work before we take a winter break and the last week of work in 2021. Hard to believe, huh? This year is just Zoom by for many of us. Uh, we are live on Facebook and YouTube every morning at 10 a.m. We appreciate you being here. If you don't catch the live version of our show, you can always watch the rebroadcast on HCC TV. TV. We're on at noon, 5 p.m., and now at 10 p.m., you can catch the show. So make sure you do that. Uh, Dr. Tony Rayo Sutherland is my co host this morning. Tony, good to see you. Good to see you. It's almost um, winter break. <laughs> it is almost winter break. Are you going out of town for this break? No, uh, I'm just happily staying home, and I got some family, thank God, here. So yeah. we'll have fun here. Good, good. Yeah, it's always good to have family by. Hey, um, want to remind folks to follow us in social media. We are all over social media. In fact, uh, how do they find us? They look for Houston Community College District, not just HCC because there's a lot of them out there, but Houston Community College District and go to Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, social media, you name it, we're there. <laughs> That's exactly right. All right, Tony, you're going to be interviewing this next guest in a few moments. Uh, we've got HCC's police chief, Michael Benford, joining us this morning. Chief, good to see you. I think your good mic morning. is muted. Hey, good morning. How are you? Just fine. How are you? Good to see you, as always. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing about it. I know you're excited about the holidays, but you guys are going to be busy. So we'll talk with you in just a few moments. Stand by. We'll check in with you in about 10 minutes. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Chief. OK, we're going to kick things off. It is that time of year, very special time of year. And this man is a Houston institution. Richard Reyes, you might know him as Pancho Claus. He's Santa's Tex-Mex cousin, and he's joining us live this morning. Good to see you, Pancho. Let's see if we can get you to unmute your mic. There we go. Let's see. Yep, we're still still muted. It's a little button on the bottom left of your phone. Okay, okay. There all we right. go. Yeah, we got you. Good oh, to see you, Poncho. Oh. How are you? I'm doing okay. Poncho unmasked. <laughs> Poncho unmasked. Huh? So, you know, I know you had a very special event last week. Um, you were honored by the city. Maybe you can tell us a bit about that. Well, it was a milestone celebration. Uh, it, there was two components. One was that I'm 70 this year and Pontra Claus is 40 this year. So my plan is to wear the zoot suit all year round and start again at 40. Sounds like a plan to me. And then the and then the other uh, was that the city and a, a DRC Corporation uh, donated $10,000 to us uh, to help uh, kickstart wow. our toy drive. So that was great news. That's incredible. Now, many years ago, I used to work in the news industry, and I did a few stories with you many, uh, many moons ago, we'll say in another <clears throat> lifetime. But you've been doing this, as you mentioned, for 40 years as Poncho Claus. Um, started in 1981. Maybe you can tell us about the inspiration for the idea and, and uh, you know, a little bit what's been going on for the past 40 years. Well, 40 years in a nutshell. <laughs> uh I joined a theater group and they had on their season, Pancho Claus. I asked them what it was it about. They say they hadn't written it yet, but they were thinking about a, a man with a sombrero and a sarape pulling a donkey. And so I said, no, 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 no. This is 1981. Zoot Suit, the movie was out. Low Rider yeah. for all the fashion. So I wrote a play uh, with The Night Before Christmas and, uh, and we did it that way instead. So... That's pretty cool. And you uh, you deliver the presence in a low rider. Is this right. your own low rider? No, Taxi Fiesta, part of Yellow Cab, which are no longer in business, right. uh, donated uh, the car to us. It was it was their car at the get go. And then on, on one of my on my retirement, they gave me the low rider. And you deliver toys. Do you raise, is this a year long effort to raise the money to get the toys? And then how do you find the families and then start doing the deliveries? How does all that work? Well, we have a lot of volunteers. We literally have about 200 volunteers and about 600 helpers. So uh, we uh, take these toy boxes to restaurants, bars, uh, grocery stores, uh, company parties, family parties, and in late November, and then we pick them up around December, and it seems to work out so far. 
When you started this back in 1981, did you ever imagine 40 years later you'd be doing it into your retirement? No, not really. I wrote a play called Poncho Claus, and then about five years into it, people started, my community started believing I was Poncho Claus, and I started getting these requests for gifts, and me and my buddies would, you know, do a few requests, and now we're up to 15,000 presents a year. What's been the challenges over the past uh, couple of years? I know things have all changed for all of us since March of 2020 when we went into the pandemic. How has that affected uh, your efforts? Well, it's a little better this year. Last year was a disaster because, as I said, these toy boxes go in bars, restaurants, mm -hmm. et cetera, and all those were closed. So where were we going to get the toys from? So we really had to put on our thinking hats. Our community really came out for us, and we managed, and everybody we promised uh, – give toys to we did and it's a little easier this year because the uh businesses are open now do you deliver the toys all throughout the month of december or do you do a big delivery on christmas day how does that work we do it all kinds of way we we visit women's shelters hospital detention centers during the month but on uh new on christmas eve christmas days are big days yeah What's it like bringing those toys to the families and seeing the, the the faces of the kids? It must be very heartwarming. It really is, uh, especially seeing the relief on the faces of the moms or grandmas yeah. raising their kids that, you know, Christmas is going to happen. What are your future plans going into 2022? What does that look like for Poncho Claus? Well, uh, 2022, we hope to be able to go to five of the poorest towns in Texas, which are basically all in the valley, even though Port Arthur's one here. Uh, but uh, we hope to take Poncho Claus into the Rio Grande Valley next year. And um, once again, this is a year long effort. You, you collect the toys and I imagine donations all throughout the year. You have uh, volunteers that work tirelessly for this and really December is the payoff, but it, it takes all year to put this together, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And we, do, we also do a Christmas in July not to mention our regular programming, this part of Poncho Claus Arts, and we have op open mics for beginning uh, actors and, and the poets, et cetera. We have festivals and just different events going on in the arts. I was reading in my notes and it says, uh, you're a former HCC instructor, is that true? Nope. <laughs> nope, oh, okay. Well, I guess my notes, I'll talk to the producer from. about that. <laughs> Sorry about I'll have that. to talk to our producer about that. So right. <laughs> tell us, um, uh, once again, you were heading into, if someone is wanting to donate or help Poncho Claus's cause, what's the best way to do so? Two ways. One, of course, is to go to our GoFundMe page, which is Poncho Claus 2021. But what I really want to impress on our community this year, especially since I'm 70, is that Poncho Claus is not Richard Reyes. Poncho Claus is a spirit. It's a community yeah. effort. So we want people to go out there and be their own poncho closets, put on the sunglasses and go out and spread some good cheer. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Do you see someone picking up the torch, wearing the zoot suit, getting the low rider <laughs> and carrying this on in the future as poncho, poncho claws 2.0? Well, I do because uh, on Christmas Day, we go out with low riders and constables, sirens, and I go through the neighborhoods as poncho claws. But this year, we're going to have two or three of those convoys with other people dressed as Poncho Claus also. So we can go around the city so the community can get that it doesn't have to be Richard Reyes. It could be anybody who wants to be Poncho Claus for the day. Richard, you've done some phenomenal work over the years. You're a Houston institution. We appreciate everything you do. And I know, as you mentioned, those parents and families appreciate that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll also have a link to your website in our social media uh, post. Poncho Claus joining us on the show. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Bye-bye. Take care. Mm -hmm. All right. We are going to uh, turn things over to Dr. Tony. Um, very inspirational seeing uh, the work that Poncho Claus and Richard Reyes has done over the years. Uh, it's just very, very inspirational. It is, and it, it it relates to the kids, you know, in a very special way, not just presence, but just uh, the, you know, the culture and everything. It's, it's it very, does, very you know, one thing he said that really struck me is, you know, I said, you know, what is it like seeing the faces of the kids, you know, getting those toys? He said, well, really, it, what's great is seeing the relief on the face of the parents who thought that they may not be able to afford a Christmas for their kids. That is heartwarming right there. There you go. It exactly. certainly is. All right, Tony, you got some important stuff to, to talk with. Uh, Chief Michael Benford's with us. I'm going to turn things over to you.
Okay, Chief Michael Benford, the HCC Chief of Police. Thank you for being with us, uh, Chief Benford. Good morning, thank you, glad to be here. Well, you know, um, this time of year, holidays, uh, it's fun and it's wonderful, but there's also a lot of crime out there and we need a lot of police around us to keep us safe. And you know what? I understand that you are doing some special recruiting efforts. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. We're currently uh, doing some recruiting for uh, the position of police officer, uh, security officer, and uh, dispatch uh, communication officer. Uh, so anyone that's interested in a career in law enforcement with the Houston Community College Police Department, they can go to HCC Careers uh, and apply for a position. Uh, we're we're uh, looking for uh, qualified applicants with a heart to serve. And if you meet that bill, uh, you can be a part of our family here at ACC Police. And I think it's real important, the part you said, a heart to serve. Uh, our police, uh, they're wonderful. They're, they're there to help us, uh, protect us, and even guide us sometimes in safety tips and things like that, right? Absolutely. Um, our guys have a very difficult job uh, in that we have a very special community that we protect and we take that very seriously. So not only are our guys uh, have to know the traditional uh, role of policing, but they also have to uh, know specialized policing. And that's what I term it, what we do here at HCC, because we deal with a very specialized community. Um, now, you have something, see something, say something campaign. That's a big campaign all over, but you have a new uh, campaign about that. Uh, tell us what you've got going there. Yes, we're in the process now of uh, putting together uh, some uh, information that we're going to be passing out uh, to our community at the beginning of the year when everyone returns. Uh, and it's a big see something, say something campaign uh, to encourage our community to uh, if there are things that uh, they are aware of, if there are things they see on our campuses, in or around our campuses, to, to reach out to our police department uh, so that we can address it. Uh, you'll be seeing posters and handout material uh, coming out very soon. You know, uh, you can't be everywhere at the same time. So everybody's eyes and ears or important, and it's kind of like Santa's elves, you know, <laughs> help you out, right? <laughs> yeah, we need all the help. help. <laughs> we need all the elves we can get, uh, especially this time of year. There's so much going on. Uh, there's so many people out there uh, shopping and uh, trying to provide for their families. But, you know, uh, there's a part of our community that would like to take advantage of those individuals. So we want to make sure that everyone is safe. Everyone is doing everything they can do to be safe and get home to their family. Uh, and speaking of holiday, what are some holiday safety tips that you can give us for now? You know, the this is a very busy shopping time of the year. Uh, again, I want to encourage our community as they're out shopping uh, to take advantage of the buddy system. Uh, if they can, you know, shop with a buddy, uh, someone that can uh, they can watch their back and they'll, you know, vice versa. Uh, also, just be mindful of, of the use of our cell phones when we're walking to and from our cars. Cell phones are a great tool, but they're also a great distraction. Uh, so we want to make sure that we're not so engrossed in our phones and we're not aware of our surroundings. Uh, also, we want to make sure we take take advantage of daylight shopping hours where we can. And if and if we do have to go out after dark, make sure that we uh, use uh, park and lighted areas uh, to make sure that uh, we're safe and, and and we can be seen at night. And if at any time you feel uncomfortable. Uh, that that sixth sense of yours kicks in and something's just not right, get on the phone, call someone, let them know uh, you need some assistance, ask for an escort. Um, all those things are available to us this time of year. So just make sure that we're safe, we're mindful of our surroundings, and we're doing everything we can to uh, get back to our, our homes and our families safely. And, you know, I was just thinking that, you know, you're talking about the cell phones. Those, I mean, they're, as you say, they're a wonderful tool. Can't live without it, I guess. I mean, I probably could, but <laughs> now, now it. <laughs> it would be difficult. But, um, yeah, I have seen so many. It, it doesn't matter if you're in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. People are eating. People standing right next to each other. Even talking to each other, they're talking on the phone yes. to each other and stuff like that. So we really have to be aware. It's almost a, a part of our, or one of our arms or something, mm -hmm. but we've got to 
watch out what's going on around us. Sometimes uh, precaution is is better than getting into the situation and trying to get out, right? Absolutely, absolutely. We, we can become so hyper-focused on this, on our cell phones, and we lose focus of people and our surroundings. And it's just very important that we disconnect sometime and, and, and be aware of what's going on around us. Um, now, uh, parking, uh, you know, the new year is coming and, you know, half of us have been working from home totally. The other half have been going to work maybe half the time, part the time, all the time. I don't know, just all kinds of things. But uh, since the new year is coming, what about, do we need to get new passes, HCC employees and, and that kind of thing to, to park? Yes, make sure that uh, you can go online or renew your parking pass if you've not done that. Uh, you can go to the HCC website, you can go to the HCC police website, it'll give you directions to uh, renew your parking passes. Uh, so absolutely, as we return, as people start to return uh, after the uh, holiday season, uh, it's very important that we have those passes and have them visible in our car so we're no, we know who are on our property. Okay. And uh, now that's not just the uh, 3100 Main, it's, it's all the campuses, All right? the campuses, correct. Uh, all the campuses and they have passes to designate student or staff, student, faculty, faculty or staff. So we want to make sure those are visible in our vehicle so that we know who's on our property. Okay. And that's part of safety too. It's Absolutely. Not just, you know, it's a big part of safety. It's not just bothering you while uh, you shouldn't park here. It's, it's safety so that, as you say, you know who's on campus and you know uh, if there's a possible problem or not. Exactly. Exactly. And so just again, um, you know, just, you know, another safety tip uh, that I'd like to uh, address is, you know, especially this time of year when we're shopping, we leave, you know, we're, you know, our hands are full, we have packages everywhere. Uh, make sure that you secure your packages in your vehicles, um, you know, uh, hide uh, your products in your trunk, under your seat. Uh, you don't want them visible because that's an enticement to uh, crooks out there to break into your vehicle and, 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 and take advantage of you. So, Let's make sure that we're mindful of what we're doing with our packages and items, cell phones, computers, purses, bags. We don't want to leave those visible to anyone. I've had an experience myself where um, I left something. I don't even remember what it was. I didn't think it was important, but I think it was just a bag. And it was a paper brown bag in, in my car. And somebody broke the window to get yeah. in there to get it. And there was nothing in the thing. You know, Absolutely. they didn't get anything out of it. But I got a lot of pain just because yeah. I had to get window fixed and all of that. Yeah, a lot of unnecessary expense. So there's some things we can do just by uh, making sure that we don't leave anything visible in our cars to kind of mitigate that. Okay, well, we really appreciate all these tips and, and the fact that you guys are just out there protecting us and helping us. And it's also a security blanket for us to know that you're there. <laughs> Absolutely. And I also want to encourage everyone to uh, follow us. You mentioned social media earlier, so please follow us on social media at HCC Police. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and um, that those are sites we use to push out uh, safety information, tips, any events that we have going on here at the police department. So please follow us on those platforms. And I'll, you know, I also also like to just wish everyone a happy holiday, a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year. And looking forward to seeing everyone at the beginning of the school year. Well, we wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and all those different things also. Yes. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> we will see you in the new year. But uh, right now, thank you, uh, Chief Michael Benford, uh, Chief of Police of the HCC Police. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Chief, for being here. Um, <clears throat> we've got a few news and announcements we want to uh, go over. One first things first. Remember, tomorrow is our graduation. That's right. Happening at NRG. It will be live streamed. We have a morning graduation and an afternoon graduation. So because of graduation, we will not be uh, hosting the show tomorrow. Uh, we'll have the day off for up to the minute, but we'll return on Friday with our final show of 2021. Hard to believe we're about to go into uh, Christmas or winter break, I should say, but uh, we've got that coming up. So today we're live, no show tomorrow, then we're back on Friday with our last live show of the year. Okay, uh, another thing to keep in mind, uh, the next two weeks or so, um, our HCC faculty and staff returns. We are off December 20th through the 31st, right, Tony? And then we'll, we will uh, return 
uh, well, several of us will be back on what, the 3rd? Yes, January 3rd, uh, most staff and faculty uh, will generally be back then. The students aren't necessarily back at that time, uh, yep. but uh, we will, our first day uh, to come back on up to the minute is January 10th. Yeah. Once you get that first week, you kind of get everything, you know, you got to get this engine started again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll be back with the show. We have uh, got a sh live show on Friday, and then we'll be back on Monday, January 10th. Okay, during winter break, here's the deal. Maybe you got some kids coming in from college and they need to catch up on a course. HCC has a deal for them. We have these mini semesters. That's right. Uh, you can earn three credits in four weeks. It's a great deal. Frame your future with this great HCC opportunity. You can register, take a number of classes, four, uh, four weeks, three credits. We'll have some information in our social media post uh, for your reference so you can find out where to, to sign up for that. Okay, two student financial programs, uh, Tony. Yes, there's uh, two more ways to make some money. One is called Path to Profession, and the other one, of course, is Work Study. Path to Profession is fairly new. It's, it's, a, it's a neat way to get a job in the field that you're studying in and get paid and learn on the job and get real world, real world, that's hard sometimes to say, to say, path to profession. And then work study is just as it says, you work, you study, you get paid. And uh, I think both of them pay $13 an hour, which is yeah. not bad. Yeah, we, you know, we um, we use a lot of work study students uh, here at HCC TV. So, you know, you can get great jobs. Uh, we're always looking for them. So if you're interested in the work study program or the path to profession, we'll have some links in our social media post after the show. Financial aid, boy, those guys are always busy. They're going to be busy over the winter break because sometimes students need help even during the holidays. So if you're looking to reach our financial aid office over the winter break, use the QR code on our district Facebook page to access their holiday Zoom lobby or stop into the Katy or West Loop campuses to meet with financial aid staff members in person. Um, HCC's financial aid office wishes all students a safe and happy holiday season. Soar during the holidays, one way of trying to keep safe. Yes, you want to soar, but you want to soar safely. Go to hashtag, 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 I'm getting all my words mixed up today. Go to hashtag HCC, soar safe campaign. In, um, uh, and and pledge. They want you to pledge to say, I'm going to do all the necessary things I need to do to uh, prevent uh, it, the spread of COVID or anything like that. We're going to protect ourselves so that we can protect ourselves and the community around us. So be sure and do that. That's right. Okay. Spring registration for 2022. Hard to believe. Spring 2022 is almost here. We're literally days away from that. Uh, you can register now. Um, as we mentioned, you need financial aid. That's available to help. We've also got uh, grants to help you pay for college. Some of them are from the Higher Education Emergency Relief Funding Package, meaning they're grants. You don't have to pay them back. It can pay for all your tuition. It's life-changing. But you need to register in order to get that funding. You have to register and be a student for the spring of 2022. We've got five ways to learn. Two of them are completely online. Two of them are hybrid and, of course, in-person classes. Yes, they're back on our campuses. We started them up again in October, and, uh, boy, they're blazing ahead. So if you want to take these in-person classes, keep in mind they're very small, a lot smaller. And if you haven't been a, to an in-person class in the last, what, 18 months, they're a lot smaller than they were last time um, because of CDC guidelines, social, uh, social distancing and all that. But go ahead and register now so you can get the class you want, the time you want, the campus you want, the professor you want, all those tangibles. Register today at hccs.edu slash now. Okay, wrapping up the show. Remember, we're not on the air tomorrow. We've got graduation. Congratulations to all our graduates. But on Friday, Tony will be back for Film Friday. Yes, we're going to have a student filmmaker from HBU, Houston Baptist University. Uh, she's put out her first, or she's going to put out her first film short, I'm going to call it Ice Cream Shop Girls. I'm excited to see what that's about. Yeah, <laughs> apparently they're shooting it in Galveston. 
Yes. So, yeah. So that's that's fun all the way around. Just being in Galveston, shooting a film, and you know, ice cream. I you, you can't got go wrong. Me. <laughs> all right, we'll hear all about that on Friday for Film Friday. And Kay Jukes of Coleman's Dental Assisting Program will be here to fill us in on their latest offerings. And remember, Coleman is registering for fall 2022 right now. So if you want to register at Coleman. You need to get into the cohort. Um, they Their classes start at different times. They don't have ones that have traditional fall and spring. So the next time for this dental assisting is fall 2022, but you need to register now. All right. We'll be back live on Friday. Graduation is tomorrow. Have a great day. We'll see you then.